Hello everyone, today I'm pleased to present our recent work that leverages conditional generative models for decision making. It is a result of collaborative research between Akul Research, Salesforce Research, UCLA, and Xi'an Jiao Tong University. Before we start, I want to briefly introduce the background of decision making using generative models. Decision Transformer and Concurrent have popularized the research agenda of decision making via generative modeling. The general idea is to consider decision making as a generative process that takes in a representation of the task objective, such as the rewards or returns of a trajectory, and outputs a representation of the trajectory, such as the states or actions. A key distinction between stepwise rewards and returns is that rewards are defined at each step, which can be notoriously difficult to label. In contrast, the return is cumulative, providing a single value for the entire trajectory. In the classical decision-making literature, this process is achieved through two interweaving processes, policy evaluation and policy improvement. Policy evaluation promotes consistency in the estimated correlations between trajectories and returns. In the decision transformer, this is realized through maximum likelihood estimation of the joint distribution of sequences and return to goes, whereas the return to goes is the summation of the rewards from the current time step to the future. Policy improvement shifts the distribution to enhance the expected returns. In Decision Transformer, this is naturally achieved since the policy is a distribution of actions conditioned on stepwise return to goes. In this work, we focus on the problem of planning. Among various ways to identify planning as a special class of decision-making problems, we pay particular attention to its data specification and inductive biases. As we mentioned before, designing stepwise rewards requires significant effort and domain expertise. So we focus on the problem of learning from trajectory return pairs, where a trajectory is a sequence of states and actions, and the return is its total rewards. This design choice forces the agents to predict the long-term future and figure out stepwise credits by themselves. A competitive temporal difference learning baseline, conservative Q-learning, was reported to be fragile under this data specification. Now, let's talk about our model, the Latent Plan Transformer. This model is designed specifically for planning tasks and has three main components. First, informative prior model. It is a learnable or informative prior distribution as a transformation from Gaussian white noise. Think of it as starting with random noise and transforming it into something meaningful in the latent space. In the figure, we represent this transformation as Z equals U of alpha Z0, where Z0 is Gaussian white noise and U of alpha is a learnable neural transformation. Second, trajectory generator model. This part of the model takes the transformed noise, Z, now called the latent plan, and generates sequences of states and actions from it in an autoregressive manner, just like the language modeling as GPT. You can think of this as the policy model that decides what actions to take. Third, return predictor model. Finally, this component predicts the return or total reward based on the latent plan Z. It's essentially a nonlinear regression model that tells us how good the plan is. In summary, LPT uses these three components to plan effectively by leveraging latent variables, which help predict long-term outcomes better than traditional methods. Now that we've introduced the components of our model, let's talk about how we learn these models from observed data. The data we use consists of trajectory and return pairs. We use a method called maximum likelihood estimation to learn from this data. Essentially, MLE helps us find the parameters of our model that make the observed data most probable. Here, we focus on the joint distribution of sequences consisting of states, actions denoted as tau, and the final return denoted as y. To optimize our model, we calculate the gradient of the log likelihood function with respect to each component of the model. This involves computing the derivatives for the prior model, denoted as delta alpha, the trajectory generator model, denoted as delta beta, and the return predictor model, denoted as delta gamma. A crucial part of this process is sampling from the posterior distribution p of z given tau and y, which represents our updated belief about the latent variables given the observed data. We achieve this using a sampling technique called Langevin dynamics. This is an iterative process that gradually approximates the posterior distribution as a gradient-based Markov chain Monte Carlo method. 
In summary, we use MLE to learn our model parameters by calculating gradients and sampling from the posterior distribution to ensure our model accurately represents the observed data. Now, let's discuss why latent variable inference can be seen as a clear process for planning. When we have an expected return, we use a method called posterior inference, or posterior sampling, with Langevin dynamics to refine our plan step by step. This process helps us iteratively improve our plan. The latent variable we infer replaces the return to goes in our policy, giving us richer information about what to expect in the future. The maximum likelihood learning of LPT gives us an agent that can plan. During testing, we first infer the latent plan Z given the desired return Y using Bayes' rule as shown in the slides. This posterior sampling is achieved using Langevin dynamics and it's obtained before the policy execution, aligning with our intuition that planning is an inference process. Additionally, inspired by classifier guidance in conditional diffusion models, we introduced a method called exploitation-inclined inference, or EI. This method uses an extra guidance weight to balance between exploiting known good strategies and exploring new ones. This sampling technique is a form of mode-seeking sampling, which ensures that our plans remain consistent over long periods. This technique is particularly useful for stitching together parts of suboptimal trajectories to create a more optimal overall path. We shall validate this sampling techniques in the following experimental sections. Now, let's move on to the experimental session to validate our approach to planning as an inference process. The first set of experiments focuses on long-term credit assignment. We tested our model in two types of environments, OpenAI Gym and Franca Kitchen. For the OpenAI Gym, we use the D4RL offline reinforcement learning, which includes densely rewarded locomotion tasks such as Half Cheetah, Hopper, and Walker 2D. We tested our model on medium and medium replay variants. In the Franca Kitchen environment, a Franca robot with 9 degrees of freedom interacts with household objects to achieve specific configurations. We focused on two datasets, mixed with non-task-directed demonstrations and partial with partially task-directed demonstrations. Long-term credit assignment with repurposed offline RL datasets is crucial for effective planning. This process involves assigning credit to actions and decisions that contribute to long-term outcomes, which is essential for improving policy and planning performance. Our experimental results show that even when using the return, which is a single value for the entire trajectory, our model performs comparably to, and sometimes even better than, strong methods that use stepwise rewards. Here, we visualize the long-term credit assignment on Walker 2D and Hopper environments, demonstrating the model's ability to handle complex locomotion tasks and long-term planning. Trajectory stitching is a key feature of the latent plan transformer. This slide shows visualizations of trajectory stitching in the maze 2D environments medium and large, highlighting the model's ability to combine parts of suboptimal trajectories to reach much further. Maze 2D is a navigation task where the agent must reach a fixed goal location from random starting positions. The agent receives one point when it reaches the goal. We conducted experiments on three layouts. Maze, medium, and large, each with increasing complexity. The training data for the Maze 2D task contains only suboptimal trajectories from and to randomly selected locations. In the visualizations, we compare trajectories sampled from the training data on the left side with those generated by our model on the right side. In the training data, the trajectories are generally short and often do not reach the goal. However, our model stitches together different suboptimal trajectories to achieve the goal, which can be seen on the right side of the figure. This task is quite challenging because it requires the model to combine different suboptimal paths to achieve better outcomes compared to the training data. Our results demonstrate that LPT can effectively stitch these trajectories to reach the desired goals, even in complex environments. This slide shows performance metrics for different tasks, including Maze 2D Medium and Large and Ant Maze U Maze. Compared to other methods, our model achieves state-of-the-art performance. With mode-seeking sampling or exploitation-inclined inference, our model performs exceptionally well. This slide also includes Ant Maze, a locomotion, and goal-reaching task with extremely sparse rewards. In Ant Maze, the agent receives a reward of 1, only if it reaches the target location. Otherwise, it gets zero. We use the Umaze and Umaze diverse variants for this task. 
Aunt May's is more challenging than May's 2D because the agent in Aunt May's has more degrees of freedom. This makes it more difficult to navigate and reach the goal compared to May's 2D. We'll show you some visualizations of our model's performance on these two tasks in the next slide. Here are further visualizations of trajectory stitching in the Aunt May's U May's environments, demonstrating the versatility and effectiveness of our proposed model. From these visualizations, you can see that the agent starts by taking in the return as input to generate a plan through posterior sampling. Then, it makes decisions step by step to reach the goal. This process highlights how LPT effectively plans and navigates through complex environments to achieve its objectives. Connect 4 is a tile-based game where the agent plays against a stochastic opponent. At the end of an episode, the agent receives one point for winning, zero for a draw, and minus one for losing. In a stochastic world, adaptable planning that can handle unforeseen noise is crucial. Previous research discovered that the performance of decision transformers degrades in stochastic environments due to overfitting to specific contingencies. We examined the performance of the latent plan transformer and other. Connect 4 is a two-player game where the opponent makes adversarial moves to disrupt the agent's plan. As shown in this video, the red is the system and the yellow is our learned agent. Our model tries to beat the system is this game. Meanwhile, as shown in the table, LPT achieves the highest score with minimal variance. The Esper baseline, which is also a latent variable model, uses an adversarial loss and a clustering loss in the latent space. LPT's performance, on par with Esper, suggests that maximum likelihood estimation with a more flexible prior can be equally effective. In conclusion, we propose the Latent Plan Transformer, a novel generative model featuring a latent vector modeled by a neural transformation of Gaussian white noise, a transformer-based policy conditioned on this latent vector, and a return estimation model. LPT is learned by maximum likelihood estimation, and posterior inference of the latent vector provides richer information about the anticipated future. LPT demonstrates competitive performance in various tasks, including Jim Muhoko locomotion, Franca kitchen, goal reaching tasks in Maze 2D and Ant Maze, and a contingent planning task, Connect 4. These empirical results support that latent variable inference can enable and improve planning in the absence of stepwise rewards. Thank you for your attention.